Welcome to the latest Wax Ecstatic Break. I'm your host, Matt Salmon, and boy, do we have a wonderful patriotic product to share with you this week. Of course, the 4th of July weekend. It's coming up, and our next podcast is this Friday, the 3rd of July. So what better on the most patriotic weekends in the nation of the United States of America than the American baseball cards. Look at this, 1988 Topps American Baseball Picture Cards. But it is better known to collectors as the Topps UK Minis. But even that name is misleading. And I'll show you why, and I will get into it a lot more <laughs> during this podcast, because as someone with quite a bit of Irish heritage in my family tree, I take offense to the name UK minis, and you'll see in just a moment. But first, let's really set the record straight here because, yes, we've got the entire set right there in front of us, but actually, oh, yeah, look how tiny these are. Look, like you, know, you can easily fit it in the palm of your hand. I feel like Andre the Giant holding a can of Miller Lite here. Yes, America. Global power, late 1980s, the economic power was starting to flex its muscle. And as we will discuss, Europe was becoming a key emerging market, not necessarily Britain or the United Kingdom, but of course, uh, as history would eventually play out, the reunification of Germany, the numerous Soviet uh, republics, satellite uh, countries falling aside and, and proclaiming their independence. And Europe, of course, would just be turned on its head practically overnight with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. And also uh, independence of Poland. I mean, there's just so much was going on in Europe, especially Eastern Europe in the 1980s. And whenever you have this kind of social movement and political uprising, you also have, ching ching money opportunities. And you can see that Topps was trying to cash in on that. And you'll see as we open this up here that the Topps UK minis were not just a cash grab for people who are maybe a little mystified by the game of American baseball in Europe, but as you'll see, uh, these are also extremely educational cards. Now, let me get the first thing out of the way here about the name Topps UK Minis. Well, why am I upset about that particular nickname? Well, if you look at the bottom here, made in the Republic of Ireland by Topps Ireland Limited, located in Cork, or as the locals there call it, Cork. It's actually a little closer to Cork. And I'll give you a little history of Ireland in the podcast. But I can tell you, the Republic of Ireland has nothing to do with the United Kingdom. There has been lots of bloodshed, and it's still a touchy subject nearly a century after the Republic of Ireland received its independence from Great Britain. So, again, as somebody of Irish heritage, having a product that was made in Ireland be called a UK Mini is a little bit offensive, uh, actually. And also, uh, in County Cork, that is the most rebellious part of the nation. Uh, typically, the southern part of the nation of Ireland has been the most rebellious. Now, Northern Ireland is still part of uh, the United Kingdom, but the Republic of Ireland is not. So, for those of you who call these Tops UK Minis, we need to come up with a different name because... The Republic of Ireland is not part of the UK, all right? So maybe we call this uh, Topps European uh, because, you know, this is something that was made in Europe and, and was most prominently featured in uh, nations that make up the United Kingdom. Uh, but the Republic of Ireland is not the United Kingdom, all right? So we look at the box here. This is kind of a neat feature here. This collection belongs to... So you already had, as we look at this checklist here, you already had a complete set in a box that, uh, you know, nowadays you can actually get, what did I pay for this? Like maybe 10 bucks, not that much. And of course, back in 1988, you could probably buy this for roughly the same amount of money, probably around eight to $10 or whatever 
the uh, British pound was exchanging for at the time. But, uh, you know, you get this complete set of cards here, 88 cards, including a checklist. But if you look at this list, you will see a star-studded cast. And they are arranged alphabetically. So Harold Baines is leading off. And your last player card, number 87, is Robin Yount. And you just scan through this checklist here, even the most non-star player. And there's, you know, several that you can choose from, including, let's see, Dion James, Jeffrey Leonard, Mike Dunn is probably the one that stands out the most here. Let's see, who else? Um, hmm, Matty Noakes, Kevin Seitzer. You know, even the guys that are certainly not Hall of Famers on this list still put together a pretty decent career. And in 1988, were chosen as one of the 87 players to be featured in this set. Now I'm going to open up this entire package here. And some of the cards, as you can see, have shuffled around a little bit over the years. And let's just take a look at the first card that uh, pops up in this set here. So we've got Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre. Nice little action shot of Gwynn at bat, stroking another uh, base hit. Looks like Shea Stadium here in the background. So you've got this giant Padre logo. You've got this uh, nice little stars and stripes kind of look here. Full color photograph. You flip it over and you see a very interesting back. Now Topps was making mini cards kind of as a fun little cast off item that was geared mainly towards kids at the same time. So if you ever collected the US Topps minis in the late 1980s, you'll see that the size of the card is the same. The general basic design is to uh, some, although a lot of times the Topps minis actually looked like the base set. Some years it did, some years it didn't. But the big difference is on the back, and you can see here, what they did was they took the uh, stats for the player, focused on just the previous season, so 1987, and the lifetime stats, which of course was a far cry from what Topps usually did. Ever since 1971, Topps had been putting complete major league and minor league stats on the backs of these cards. Well, why would they do that for this European set? Well, because they had to teach the game of baseball to the Europeans. So, you have a little factoid here. Tony was a star basketball player in college. Of course, if you're in the States, you probably know that already. You have the uh, facsimile autograph here, the information, you know, personal information here. But every card has a little baseball uh, story here, talking baseball. And it's basically going through baseball 101. So let me get it nice and close to the camera here. A bunt is a batted ball not swung at, but intentionally met with bat and tapped slowly within infield. A batter may bunt to try advancing a runner. And then it also refers you to the next talking baseball item here. C number 30 for sacrifice definition. So what the Topps American baseball sets of the late 1980s were trying to do was through the star players of the game, you not only got educated with these full color photos of these players in action, you not only got a big old logo here to you know showcase who they played for, but when you flipped it over, yes, you got your standard baseball card stuff on the back, but an interesting factoid about the player and a definition of the baseball rule. So let's take a look here. We've got Bedrock, Steve Bedrosian, then with the Philadelphia Phillies. So again, big Phillies uh, logo there. Bedrosian in action. We flip it over. Steve is a big basketball fan and roots for the Boston Celtics. And then our talking baseball stat. The G category for both pitchers and batters indicates the number of games in which a player has appeared. Steve Bedrosian pitched in 65 games in 1987. So not just a definition, but then applying that definition to the previous year's stats, which I thought was pretty neat. So let's flip through real quickly some of these other cards. We've got George Bell with the Blue Jays, uh, listed as an outfielder, much to the chagrin of Jimmy Williams at the time. So again, talking baseball, the AB category 
indicates the number of official at-bats by a batter. Bases on balls, sacrifices, and hits batsmen are not official at-bats. And then you've got this fun little fact here. His brother Juan is a top prospect in the minor leagues and would actually get a little cup of coffee. So we got Paul Molitor, Charlie Huff, Will Clark. Nice little action shot there, Will Clark. Let's go through just a few others here. Alan Trammell, stroke and a base hit. Larry Sheets. I always love that name there. Larry Sheets, the bed. We've got our wonderful checklist card. Vince Coleman. I may get into Vince Coleman in this upcoming podcast. As uh, I just read about Vince Coleman's life in the Wax Pack book by Brad Bluchanch, soon to be joining us on the program. Lloyd Mosby, another uh, Blue Jay outfield standout. Good old Dave Stewart there. Teddy Higuera. Schmitty near the end of his career there with the Phillies. There's Robin Yount, again, card number 87. The Kid, Gary Carter. Tim Wallach looks like he's pulling a wedgie out. That's that's rather unfortunate. Do you know what's also cool about these uh, old cards? You not only see you know former players and you know the old Expos uniform, but the old RC Cola logo. Spending up most of my youth in the South, I drank a lot of RC Cola. Jack Morris being pensive and somber as usual outside the bullpen. Got Donnie Baseball here with the Yankees. I'll show you a few more here because we're going to pick some out and talk about them on the show. I think we'll talk Larry Sheets and Vince Coleman. We all know about Nolan Ryan. The Hawk, Andre Dawson. Willie McGee. Boy, even on a mini card, Willie McGee looks mini. Looks like you could step on him. Slightly psychotic, Kevin Mitchell. Ryan Sandberg. Look at that pickle tickler. What a stash. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that, this is... Wow, this is Don Juan right there. Snazzy. Kirby Puckett looking kind of mini here, too. And it looks like this picture might have been from the 87 World Series. That looks like a Cardinals bat boy in the background. Corey Snyder at his peak. There's Kevin Seitzer. Not necessarily stroking a ground ball. Looks like this one's up in the air just a little bit. Not quite Rudy Mioli, 75 tops, but uh, not very... Good for him. The Terminator, Tom Hankey. Got Brett Saberhagen. Jose Canseco. This would have been one of the big finds in the set back then. Mike Scott, the aging veteran of the Astros. Might talk a little bit about Mike Scott. We haven't uh, discussed him, I don't believe. Young Barry Bonds, looking trim back in the day. Jeffrey Leonard, not only stroking a ground ball, looked like he's uh, about to lose his bat. Ricky with his stint with the Yankees. We've got George Brett over at first base there. And Joe Carter. And again, you know, we've got probably about you know 50 more cards here. You got Mark McGuire, Strawberry, Eddie Murray, Frankie V, Dwight Evans, Zane Smith. What did I tell you about Zane Smith? Frickin' Zane Smith showing up everywhere in my life. John Franco, Wade Boggs. All sorts of people here. And Wally Joyner, just looking very upset about something to wrap up the pack. So, some very interesting cards here. And I'm actually, in just my own personal time, I'm going to have fun looking through all of these and looking at how Tops took some of the, uh, you know, talking baseball tidbits and tie, tie them into the uh, player. Let's see if there's one here, one more real quick. Yeah, you don't have any triple plays with Jeffrey Leonard. And it doesn't look like it. And I'm not going to sit here all day and try to find one more, kind of like what we have with Steve Bedrosian. But I'm going to have a lot of fun just kind of picking through these and, and looking at, you know, some of these stats and some of these stories and, you know, taking a look back at some of these mini cards. So we'll talk about it in our next podcast this Friday, July 3rd, drops at noon Eastern. And uh, we'll celebrate America's independence, uh, get on my soapbox about the whole Ireland versus UK mini thing, and uh, take a look at a really unique and fun set that is also very affordable, very easy for collectors to get these days. I'm Matt Salmon. You've been watching the Wax Ecstatic Break. We'll see you on our podcast this Friday.